YouTube. I am Pinstar, and this is Arc Nova. Today, I will teach you how to play Arc Nova. Now, what is Arc Nova? Arc Nova is a board game. It is a physical board game, um, but this is the digital version of it on BoardGameArena.com. Full disclosure, I am not being sponsored by either the makers of Arc Nova or BoardGameArena.com to present these. I just am a big fan of both. Um, essentially, what you are doing in Arc Nova is you are, uh, you are the owner of a zoo and you are trying to build up your zoo um, to basically attract as many visitors as possible by raising your attraction rating while also contributing to the conservation efforts of animals to to you know work with with international uh, agencies to uh, for the greater betterment bet, the betterment of all animal kind and you're scored accordingly now how do you play well this is game for uh, uh, up to four players First things that uh, you do is that you are given two different maps to choose from randomly. There's a pool of eight of them. Um, these, if you've uh, watched my Terraforming Mars uh, videos, the map that you receive is kind of like your starting corporation. Every map is different and has little bonuses and perks and benefits that are unique to it compared to the other maps. Uh, but how you use it and how you work with it is is up to you. And here I have randomly drew, drew, um, drawn map number three, Silver Lake, or map number six, Research Institute. Um, and while I could go, I, I could go into what makes these maps different. I'll explain that along the way. Uh, in this game, and this is by the way a recorded game, we went with map number three. Okay, so now having locked in our map and our uh, opponents having locked in their maps, we can see what maps they have chosen. Uh, that's public information. But again, I won't go into too, too many details about the maps themselves. Um, what we are given is, uh, we are given our initial hand of eight cards and two scoring cards. Now for our initial hand of eight cards, we need to choose, which we need to choose four of them to keep and the rest we have to discard. Now, what, what are these cards? What do they mean? Well, each card is, so what are these cards and what do they mean? Well. I will explain them more in depth as we play them because it's easier to explain what each of the different symbols mean and what each of the different abilities do um, as we go along here. So we end up uh, keeping the greater flamingo, the horse, the guinea pig, and the, the geologist. All right, now you'll notice a, group, a series of cards up here. These are the public board cards. Uh, more on how we interact with that in a moment. We're gonna wait for the other players to take their turns. Okay, now, the biggest thing to, to know about Arc Nova is, is your actions. Down here, we have our five action cards. Whenever it is your turn, you must choose one of these five action cards to, to well, use and, and perform the action. Now, the order that they are here on your board is actually very important, number one through five. These numbers are not static but rather it shows the power of the card in its current space. So the cards action, which allows me to draw cards, becomes much more powerful if we have it sitting here on the, on the fifth slot. Um, as you can see from this chart here, you, you know, if, if the cards is on the five slot, we get to draw three cards, discard one, or snap one, which I'll get into later. Uh, whereas if it was only on the one slot, you got to draw one card and then you have to discard one card. Rather weak and, and ineffectual. So the, the higher up on the, the list here, the more 
powerful that action is. And it's in what that power means for each action is different for each one. And I'll show you as you go through here. Our first move here is we decide to take an association action. The association action interacts with this board. There's a number of different things that your zoo can do to inter in interact with the international community. Um, you can basically just do a PR stunt. Um, if you're if you have at least power two, you can get a couple of points of reputation, which brings you up on this board, which gives you some rewards along the way. Um, if you have at least power three, you can get choose one partner zoo from one of the five regions of the world. This not only gives you um, discounts on any animals that you buy from that region of the world, um, but there are some animals and some requirements that, that require that you have a partner with that. Uh, Winter Wolf, during his turn, took an action and took one of the partner universities. Universities have a couple of different things. Um, just like within Terraforming Mars, you have different tags here. And some of these universities will give you science tags, which are required. They don't do anything by themselves, but they, they interact with other cards. But he took one that is not only gives him one reputation, that's what this little scholar cap does, but Normally you have a hand size limit of three. This increases it to five. Now you might be saying, well, Pinstar, you have four cards and you only have a hand size limit of three. How is, how is that possible? I'll get into when the high hand size limit is enforced. It's not constantly enforced. And then lastly, you have conservation projects here. These are one of the major ways that you can score conservation points. If you have strength five of your, of your association action and you have one of your workers go here, um, you can basically support a conservation effort as long as you meet the requirements for it. So in here, for example, for Europe, if you've got two Europe tags, two animals that come from Europe, or two, two cards that have a Europe tag, then you can support it and get two. But if you have five Europe tags, the same action can occupy this slot and get you five conservation. And conservation, along with appeal, the little ticket icon, are the two things that you need to, to obtain victory. Now, I have a greater flamingo here. You can see in the upper right corner here, it's got a Europe tag. It doesn't need one, um, but it, it, it doesn't need a partner zoo rather. But if I took the Europe partner zoo, you over on the upper left here, um, you can see the 16, that's how much money it costs. So we start with 25. Um, the three in the little hexagon shows what size enclosure it needs to be placed in. The little water symbol shows that it needs to be placed next to water because, well, flamingos like water. Uh, and lastly, the little bird icon shows that this is a bird, um, which is important for other sorts of tags. For example, this thing, this here, this reptile says, is basically how many reptile tags do you have? And these, these um, global things, these global um, conservation efforts are different every single game. So you're not always going to be going for these specific countries and reptiles. It could be all over the place. There's, there's a bunch of different potentials that could be dealt out at the beginning of the game. Um, now, I see here that Europe is, uh, is one of the things. So I kind of want to start, you know, reaching for this. We've got a European animal and when we, if we get a partner zoo, we get a Europe tag out of that. So I'm going to do the take the association action at a strength level three and take Europe. Now, the one thing to note about associations is that at the beginning of the game, each player only has one association worker. Um, and you can't take more association actions unless you have available workers. Now there's ways to get more workers, but early in the game, difficult to do that. The other thing to note is now that I've taken the association action, my association card moved all the way down to the one slot. It is now very weak. Too weak to do anything even if we had an available association worker. But everything else below it got moved up one. Animals was at a one, now it's at a two. Sponsors was at a two, now it's at a three. This is how cards shuffle up. So you're always going to have a card in the top spot, but 
you know, which cards you pick and which ones get shuffled around is up to you. The other thing to note here, um, these are limited per round, the or, or per break at rather. And I'll explain that in a moment. But so I took Europe off the board, which means that uh, Dana, he went and took a, an action here, but he couldn't take Europe as well. He could not partner up with Europe this turn um, because I've already partnered with them. He has to wait until the first break when these get replenished. But he took a different uh, partner zoo, uh, the Americas. So that's now his, that's now on his board. Um, and it's a Winter Wolf wanted to, um, or rather Captain Scoopers wanted to take an association action. She couldn't take either of these two, but she could take one of these others. Same goes with the universities. Uh, Winter Wolf took this top university, so she could not take that one this turn. Now, I know for a fact that we need a size three enclosure here. So the way that you get enclosures is by taking the build action. Now the build action, you can build a uh, um, an enclosure or you know something with a maximum size of the power that the build action is at. So we could build an up to a size four enclosure. Now we don't have to choose a four, we can go smaller because we have to pay for every space that we build and money is limited. So you don't always want to max out everything, but we do and we do want an enclosure. We do need one. Also notice now that we have the European Zoo, we, here's the discount. It was 16 bucks, now it's only 13 bucks for this flamingo. So we are going to take the build action. Now, these are all the different things that we can build with our build action. The, um, each of these are enclosures of a different size. So the size three takes up three tiles and is always in this shape. You can place, your, your first tile in your zoo has to be placed touching the edge somewhere. Um, you can be next to water or rocks. In fact, you kind of have to be in order for it to, um, in, in order for it to, to count for these symbols. Like for example, if we want the flamingo, it has to border water, one tile of water at least. Um, so we're gonna go and grab that. There's other special buildings. Um, kiosks help you make money um, and pavilions increase your appeal and also pair nicely with kiosks, but we'll get into that later on. So we grab the ties three and I put it down here. Now, one thing, one thing that you noticed there, I wanna show you here, let's, let, me, let's, let me go back a move. So one thing I wanna point out here, um, there's another reason why I um, I put the, the tile where I wanted to is, see all these little yellow spaces here dotted across the map? Well, these are special effects. These are special bonuses that you get when you build over that spot. So if you build an enclosure that covers any of these tiles, you get the bonus that's on that tile. So part of your strategy can be uh, structuring your enclosures to grab as many bonuses as you can. Um, and each map has a wildly different set of bonus tiles. This particular map, Silver Lakes, claim to fame is all these little two cache tiles that you get when you cover around this lake. But my opening move is, I'm interested in this tile. Take one card from within reputation range or draw a card from the deck. Now, what does it mean by reputation range? Well, remember I was mentioning before, there's a couple of different ways to gain reputation. This is the reputation track, and it is, it is below this track of these six cards for a reason. Basically, as your reputation goes up, whenever you have a chance to draw from reputation range, you can draw from a wider selection of these cards. Right now, I'm at reputation one, so the only card I can draw if I took a draw from reputation is this pygmy hippopotamus because it's right here in the, in the first slot. I could not use that effect to draw any of these other cards. That being said, I have one of my scoring cards here, Quart Aquatic Park, gives me points at the end of the game for having lots of water icons. So I figure, you know what? I'm starting the game with a water icon animal, the flamingo might as well start collecting those things. And there's a special um, 
scoring icon that also gives you some additional um, points for having water icons. So I figure, you know what, let's go in on the water icon. So I want that, that pygmy hippopotamus because you can see next to its two, it also requires water, but that's a good thing. So I decide to place it down here to trigger this draw one card from within reputation or one off the top of the deck, but I want that hippopotamus. So I cover that and now I get you may take one card from display or from the top. I grab the hippopotamus. So now that has been added to my hand. So now we have this empty enclosure. We don't have any animals in it yet, but you have to build it first before you can put the animals in. Aha! So, Captain Scoobers just took an action, they sponsors, and broke for five. Now, when I, when I mentioned before that you can only do these things one per turn, and you only have your one association worker per turn, um, and that your your can't card hand limit is only enforced during you know at certain points. That all ties to the break system, the coffee break. It is literally a game mechanic, the coffee break. So in a four-player game, there are basically 15 points of of you know towards a coffee break starts at zero. Whenever certain actions will add points to the coffee break meter basically bringing us closer to a coffee break. So Captain Scoobers took an action that added five points to the coffee break meter, increasing it to that. When we reach 15, we execute a coffee break. What does that do? Well, we, everybody, um, all these icons replenish. So the zoos that we took, new copies of them become available. So somebody else could take Europe. Somebody else could take North America. Somebody else could take this, this university. We get our association workers back. So that means we could take, we could take another action with them. Um, it, everybody gets their income. Their income is based very heavily on their appeal. So higher appeal, more ticket, no more, more of the public bu uh, are buying tickets, the more money that you get. And that's when the hand limit size is enforced. So if there was a coffee break right now, I would have to choose two of my cards in hand and discard them. But we're only at five of 15, we're fine. So on we go. So now, now we have our, we have our enclosure built. We have our pa partner zoo, which is applying the discount. Now all that's really left is to, well, build the, uh, um, uh, place play our flamingo, and that's with the animals action. Now our animals action is only at a, is only at uh, the strength three. But as you can see from the card, and you want to look at the blue side. The purple side is after we upgrade it. More on that later. The animal side, the strength two, three, and four all do the same thing. You get to play one animal. Um, now strength five lets you play two animals, but you have to a have the open enclosures for two animals. B, have two different animal cards, and C, have enough money to buy both of those animals. So, you, you know, even if you could wait till it gets to strength five, you can't always play two animals. So you might as well put one down. So let's play our flamingo. Of course, I didn't do that. I actually took cards. I forgot what I was doing in this one. So I decide not to do the animals action right away. Instead, I use my strength five cards action just to add more cards to my hand, see what uh, see what it is, what, what things I might get, see if there's any better cards that I could get. Um, the other thing that I get to do, instead of drawing three cards from the deck, the alternative effect is called snapping. I get to snap one card. What does snap one card mean? Well, before we were drawing from the reputation range when we triggered this little bonus effect, which forced us to, to take a card from the first slot. If you get to snap a card, that means you get to take a card on any slot. Just one. But if you see a card that you really, really want, you can snap it to make sure that you get it, where, rather than wait for it to come down the pipeline here. Of course, that's not what I do. I grab cards. I draw three from the deck. 
We get the veterinarian, the barred owl hut, and the predator breeding program. And now I have to choose one of my cards in hand. Doesn't have to be from the three that I, I took and uh, discard it. I decided to discard the geologist because he gives us bonuses based on rock uh, spaces. And we don't have a lot of rock spaces or animals that use rock spaces. We're going all in on the water. And as you can see, my hand is huge now, but not punished for it yet. Um, we, we, we need to play down our hand though. Taking cards, by the way, advances the break token by two spaces. So I, I advanced it, Winter Wolf advanced it, Dana just advanced it. So it's creeping closer to 15. It's making me a little bit nervous. Now I believe we take our, uh, our animals action because I want to make sure that we play something before the break happens. Yes, we do take our animals action. So now we are asked to choose an animal from our hand. Um, the Greater Flamingo is the only one that would fit into our enclosures here. One thing to note here, so for so why not the Pygmy Hippopotamus? You can place creatures that are that require a smaller enclosure into a larger one, but there's a problem here. If you see down on the left middle left side, right below the money, the $15, there's a little handshake symbol. Little symbols on along the left side there are requirements, things that you have to have in place before you're allowed to play that card. That little handshake symbol means that you have to have the partner zoo for that, that animal's country. And you can see in the upper right corner, they're from Africa, not from Europe. So my European uh, partner zoo, it does not count. So we can't play the pygmy hippopotamus yet. We need to get the Africa partner zoo before we can play that. So they will sit in our hand in the meantime, but we can play our flamingo. Now the flamingo, as you can see, does not require the Europe partner zoo, uh, it, but it does make it cheaper. So I took, I'm, I'm glad, I do not regret taking the Europe partner zoo. So we pay 13 from our, our cash. Um, now, Every animal has some sort of ability, and the Greater Flamingo has Posturing 1. You may place one free kiosk or pavilion. So it's a, it's a free beneficial effect that we get just for playing the animal. We also get down here, the um, we also get appeal by this. By, by adding this animal to our zoo, our zoo is now more appealing. We, our score has increased. And also our money at the end of a break has increased because more people are coming to our zoo, buying tickets and thus getting us money. But now we can place a pavilion or a kiosk from free, for free. If I remember correctly, I go for a kiosk. Now, we remember we, we covered up that two, so we get a free $2 just for putting it down on that square. Now, what does a kiosk do? Well, what a kiosk does is it generates us extra income. It gives us plus one income per unique building touching it. Um, as long as there, as long as it's an, um, um, and for enclosures, the enclosures have to have an animal in it for it to count. So now before I had 12 income per turn, now I have 13 income per turn because this kiosk is next to one unique building. As we build other unique buildings touching it, then our income bonus from this one kiosk will increase. So the kiosk doesn't do anything as far as getting you, you know, the, the kind of points that win you the game, the, the appeal points or the conservation points, but it generates money and money can be used to get the things that win you game. So getting those early is a good thing, which is the other reason I kind of went for the flamingo here because getting an early, an early freebie one of those. Now you can build them, but it takes a whole build action. A whole action just to build one little rinky-dink building, at least in the beginning. Now it's come back to me. Nobody has increased the break counter yet. That's a good thing. We can keep playing cards out of our hand. Um, so now my, I, my, the card that's sitting on my five slot is sponsors. Now sponsors can be used for one of two different things. One. If we just play sponsors by themselves, we basically beg our sponsors for money and we get a number, an amount of money 
uh, equal to the level of the card. So if we bro if we we begged our sponsors for at level five, we get five money. But whenever you beg your sponsors, that increases the break token, um, or the break counter rather, which would immediately get it to level to fifteen and cause a break. And I would lose a lot of the cards I have in hand, and I don't want to do that. So the other thing that you can do with sponsors is you can play sponsor cards, these blue ones. Um, and the number in the upper left corner, these don't have any, any costs as far as like money, but you need to have your sponsorship at a certain level to play them. In, in this case, the veter veterinarian is, requires a level four. Now you might be saying, well, Pinstar, what about that Bard Owlhound? How the heck do you get a six? There's only, f you can only go up to strength five. How do you play the Bard Owlhound? Well, the way that, there's two different ways. One, if you upgrade the sponsor's card, which I'll get into how you upgrade cards in a bit, um, the, the, the upgraded version of sponsors gives you basically power plus one. So if you do it at a five, it's actually a six and that lets you play the hut. Also, there's these plus tokens, which are another thing that you can find scattered on the board that basically if you spend them, it increases the strength of whatever action you're doing. So if you were taking a five, you could, spend, you could spend a plus token and make it a six and therefore play the hut. But we don't have either of those. So we're gonna go with the veterinarian. Now the veterinarian has a couple of different effects here. He has actually, he has three different types of effects. So the yellow one, the, the symbols may be, sim be but um, if we already have universities in our zoo, he'll give us some cash. Um, now, we don't have any universities, so we don't get any immediate influxes of cash from it, which is fine. Um, the second thing is that normally, in order to do the conservation action here, you need your association at a strength five. Um, basically, you have to wait for it to get all the way to the top before you, tr you trigger it, and then you can take that action. His ability says that, no, nah, it only needs to be a four. That becomes important later on. I'll, I'll explain it. it. That's a more of an advanced topic, but it's useful. Then the final ability is an end of game ability. If you, by the end of the game, collect all three different universities, then you get an extra bonus conservation point added to your score at the end of the game. So all in all, a useful card. So we're gonna play him. And again, it doesn't cost us anything. We have to take the action and we have to play the card, but didn't use up any of our money. All right, another, we're marching ever closer to a break. All right, so Captain Scoober snapped a card. She saw something she wanted and took it. I think that was the, uh, the Guided School Tours, which was another sponsor card. So they, they, she, she determined that that was valuable enough to her strategy that she wants to go out of her way to grab that. Fair enough. And you can kind of read into what people's, you know, my, what people might be having. You can't see what cards they have in hand or you can't, and you can't see what their goals are, but you might be able to figure it out, especially if you look at what they're snapping. Dana has triggered a break. Now, the benefit to triggering a break is that you get one of those X tokens for free you, as, as the player that triggers that break. Now, now we're sitting on five cards. Our hand limit is three. We must, at this point, at this moment, discard two of our cards. Now, we get to choose which ones we discard. Um, and we're, we're we're gonna we, we want the hippopotamus. They're key to our strategy. We have two petting zoo animals. Where there's a special enclosure for the petting zoo that allows us to play these in a fairly compact manner. They don't really do anything for us conservation-wise, but they're worth more money the more petting zoo animals that you have. So we don't want to lose them. So we get rid of our barred owl hut and our predator breeding program. These green cards are special, um, are special conservation projects that you can add to the board. The four down here are randomly determined, but you there are going to be four more added by any player 
um, by having the right card in hand and supporting it. Now, we it requires one predator and a partner zoo of the same continent. We neither have we don't have any predators. Not on board, not in hand, so we couldn't do this even if we wanted to, so let's get rid of it. So here, all of these tiles that got used up last round are replenished. Somebody else can get Europe, somebody else could get America, somebody else can get the five card university. And then, yeah, everybody else gets paid based on their, their income. So we got our 13, we're actually, over that break, we made the most money of everybody. We have we have a higher um, uh, appeal, and we get that plus one bonus from that kiosk. Also, looking talking about the end game appeal and conservation, this is the final scoring track. Your appeal starts down here at, at zero, and then if you go if if you go first, it starts at zero. If you have, if you go less than first, you get one bonus appeal just to make up for being one of the later players. Um, but as you get more and more appeal, your your appeal token goes up this list. Meanwhile, up here, this is the conservation, and as you get conservation points. These, your, your conservation token advances down the opposite way. The game ends when you're, when the one player's appeal token and conservation token intersect. So if my, if I had 45 appeal um, and my conservation token was down here, that would trigger the end of the game. And then after everyone takes one more turn, the player who, who has the most points, basically appeal plus the scoring bonus for the conservation level, um, these little white numbers here, is the, the winner of the game overall. So that's, that is the goal. You want both appeal and conservation points. Both are important. Oh yeah, the other reason I went there is, see these little numbers up here? This is how much base income you get per uh, at, at appeal here. So as you can see here, because I'm at nine appeal, our base income is 12, plus one from the kiosk, 13. So a few turns later, we find ourselves at, um, at with our association skill at five. And we since we have our association worker back, we can take our association action. Now this leads up to everything that we've been playing for, we've been planning for. We have two Europe tags. We have one tag gained from the partner zoo itself. At get, obtaining a partner zoo of a country will give you one tag of that country. But then we also have another Europe tag from our greater flamingo. It only counts the tags for things that you've played, uh, not, things in your hand do not count. So with two tags, we are able to claim the two point spot here. Now you might be saying, well, Pinstar, why don't you just go for the higher ones? Well, that's all well and good, but we wouldn't, it would take us a lot longer to qualify for those. And there's a benefit to claiming the lower one now. Let me show you. So we're gonna play or support a conservation project. It takes strength five and we support that. Now, this does a couple of things. One, we, um, we get to choose, we, we put one of our squares over here. These are all bonuses, and these bonuses are slightly different based on the map, and we get to pick which of these bonuses we want to receive. The ones on the bottom are one-time things, either 3x tokens, 12 money, a new association worker, um, or we get to take another turn after this one, but just once. The ones up here are repeated things. Every time the break happens, and also once immediately, you get this thing. So every break, we get five more money. Every break, we get to build a size two enclosure for free. Every break, we get to snap a card. So lots of really powerful bonuses, but probably the most useful to take first is your is a second association worker that allows us to um, have somebody else out there um, to gain an association worker the other thing it does is it moves us up the conservation track and when you hit two conservation you can either upgrade a card or get another association worker 
it is so much better to upgrade a card. Now, upgrading a card, you can upgrade any of the cards. If you look at each of these cards, see how there's the, the, uh, the purple side? At the start of the game, all of your cards are on the blue side, somewhat weaker. The purple side for each card is, is basically more powerful, it lets you do more things, get more bonuses, um, gives you more benefits, lets you, it makes it more powerful even when you're using it not on, on its five strength, um, and generally allows you more versatility out of what you're playing here. So upgrading your cards over time is a, a very powerful thing to do. The thing is, scattered throughout the game, see these little icons? These are the things that when you get this thing, you get to upgrade one of your cards. There's, there's one up here on the conservation track, one here on the reputation track, one here on the partner zoo track, and one here on the university track. There's only four in the game, meaning that of your five cards, one of them, even if you're really good about getting all the bonuses, you're gonna have to pick one of your cards to leave unupgraded. Um, so that's kind of a strategic thing that you need to pick. So we need to pick one of our cards to upgrade. We decide to upgrade our cards card, which uh, not only gives us more total cards based on the power, but now also allows us to take cards from our reputation range. Remember, remember that mechanic? We can, instead of being forced to draw just from the deck, we can draw from the deck or within our reputation range. Now granted, our, one, our reputation range is still only the one, but if we expand our reputation, then we get access to more of these. Um, so that is sort of the final part of this tutorial here. What, what are we aiming for? And, you know, our, we've improved our score. And while the conservation points do not, in, do not in help with our income, it does help us move our upper tracker further down the line here. Because again, remember, the goal is to have your appeal and your, your uh, conservation meet in the middle and then have, the, have them basically pass each other the furthest by the end of the game. All right, folks, so that is a brief uh, tutorial on how to play um, Arc Nova. Want to see more? Want to see a full game? We're going to be having a uh, multiplayer mashup with exactly these four players uh, coming soon, either over the weekend or early next week. So if you guys like this episode and you want to see more like it, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and leave me a comment, good, better, and different. By the way, there is a link um, to uh, Board Game Arena if you want to try it out. Um, you do need a premium subscription to uh, start a game of Arc Nova, but if you have a friend who has a premium subscription, they can invite you as a free player to be one of the players. So it's a, it's a, it's a good deal. I, I like it. Again, not sponsored. Uh, but there's a link down in the description if you want to take a look. Um, until next time, Binstar out.